As we improve manufacturing and inspection technologies, companies are demanding tighter tolerances. Level, spindle tram, constant shop temperature, spindle warm-ups, and consistent setup procedures can help you make more accurate parts with any machine. New equipment often provides closer tolerance standards, but maintenance and operator techniques can still have a big impact on your milling accuracy with new or old equipment. Of all maintenance, one of the most important may be leveling your machine regularly. Cracked settling floors and foundations can have a huge impact on your machine. Most vertical machining centers rely on leveling to align the head and column with the table. The following procedure is useful for most vertical machining centers, but it is very important that you follow specific leveling and maintenance instructions provided by your machine's manufacturer. First, the machine's table must be leveled. This requires a quality machinist's level. Level the machine along the X and Y axis. Always verify your level by checking opposite directions. Once the table is leveled, the process continues with squaring the column to the table. Traverse a dial indicator along a machine square in XZ and YZ. Adjustments are made with the machine's rear leveling screws without adjusting the front screws that support the machine's table. The column may generally be adjusted to tilt forward and back and sideways just with these two leveling screws. Now check your spindle for proper tram in the machine. This can be one of the most common problems with machine alignments, especially if a crash has pushed the spindle out of alignment. Spindle tram is checked by swinging a dial indicator that is clamped to a tool holder. If the spindle is found to be out of tram, realignment of the spindle by a factory technician may be required. Don't attempt to adjust spindle tram with the leveling screws once the previous column alignment has been performed. All materials except pure graphite suffer from expansion and contraction with temperature changes. Steel and iron grow roughly six and a half millionths of an inch per inch per degree Fahrenheit. While millionths of an inch sound insignificant, if we consider the growth of a 20-inch ball screw when its temperature changes by 15 degrees, we have grown by nominally two thousandths of an inch. This makes it clear that changing shop temperatures will affect your machine and your part accuracy. To work accurately, your machines must be in a temperature-controlled environment. It may take as much as a full day or more to stabilize a machine's temperature when there are major temperature changes in the shop. Not only are heating and air conditioning needed, but HVAC vents must be directed away from machines to minimize temperature fluctuations. Pay careful attention to machine locations relative to overhead doors, chillers, hydraulic pumps, and other heat sources. In our modern world of working to tenths, even a temperature change of 2 degrees Fahrenheit could put you out of tolerance, even on small parts. The spindle of your machine may be one of the most obvious sources of inaccuracy as it grows and shrinks. Changing spindle speeds will most always change the tool height. Machinists often report z-axis variations of two thousandths of an inch or more at normal operating speeds. 
Refrigerated closed circuit chillers are often used to cool the spindles and minimize thermal changes. Still, some growth is normal in virtually all spindles. One of the best ways to deal with spindle growth is by planned tool offsets and warm-ups. First, get familiar with your spindle's actual growth at various speeds by testing and charting it. Then, when you set your tool offsets, add in compensating values to help correct for the growth. Also, get familiar with the time your spindle takes to stabilize. For close tolerance applications, don't just do a tool change and start milling. Instead, program in a dwell for the time needed to stabilize. That way, you can even run unattended, yet end up with accurate, predictable results. We generally start with larger cutters running at slower speeds and increase spindle speeds with subsequent smaller cutters. That helps minimize dwell times for stabilizing. Keep in mind that if an operation uses a slower speed, the spindle will shrink back. Ideally, you should allow time for the spindle to normalize for this, too. If your machine is equipped with an automatic probing system, it is best to probe tool length after the tool change and warm up, immediately before milling. Ideally, your tools should all be similar length. Also, use your dial indicator at approximately the same height as the tools. These are small details, yet they minimize variations caused by machine alignment and thermal growth in the machine axes. Your maintenance and operating techniques can make a big difference in the accuracy of your milling. Check machine level and alignment regularly and adjust as needed. Maintain a constant shop temperature and pay attention to minimize heat sources and drafts near precision equipment. Know your spindle's growth and plan it into your setups. Add in stabilizing dwells for spindle speed changes. Keep tool length similar as much as possible and set up with your indicator at the same height. These tips can help you work more accurately with any mill, new or old.